Hi guys, Glader here. So today I have another interesting video about World of Warcraft emulation and network game emulation in general. I've gone ahead and I've done a few things and added a few more features to GladNet 3 that allows for server emulation. And mostly this is creating um, a generic context for message handlers because servers need some additional context about messages that are coming in. Uh, most importantly, being able to associate connections with a unique identifier. And that's essentially what's now in the context. That took some work. And I've gone ahead and uh, implemented authentication for World of Warcraft. And, you know, it's not completely finished, but it now actually does work. It talk to the database. It'll actually do the uh, SRP authentication stuff. Now this is all subject to some refactoring, but you know this part right here is more or less pretty clean. Uh, we just there's a new there's a new repository service that we store challenge information, and we still have to store like status and stuff to present prevent some exploits. But for right now, it works. Uh, we just you do the basic SRP stuff. If you want to learn about SRP, just Google Stanford SRP. It's, it's what World of Warcraft uses. And so this is the challenge request, the first message we get. We do some stuff, uh, then we, we store the challenge model in like a persistence service. Uh, right now it's just in memory, but you could actually do it in a database if you wanted to. And then we you know, we return a challenge response. This is all a async all the way down. Um, and then the next message that gets sent is the proof. Now this this needs some refactoring. There's a lot of um, very ugly things in here. For example, this, which I think is the same every time. I think I think it's actually weird. I think Trinity Core computes this value every single time. I don't even know what it should be called. They call it T3. WCell calls it something else. I didn't look at Mingo, so they probably call it T3. I don't know. But it's, it never changes in value, but they compute it every time. So, went ahead and, you know, for now, I've got that set up. Uh, we're about to get some ugly code here. Basically, we check, we have the same challenge repository here to be able to load the, I guess you could call it the challenge context, which will have the information about account name, uh, public, private, B, um, the verifier and stuff, whatever. And so this is the part that could use some refactoring, for sure. But this works. Um, this is the server-side SRP stuff. It's very inefficient right now. Needs some work. Um, and here's here's some test code that basically will tell us if it fails or succeeds. You know, again, all async. Um, not completely implemented. You know, <laughs> even as what they call the test class down here. For efficient memory comparison. Um, so yeah, honestly, I don't even know if that's any faster. I'm not, I didn't profile anything, but let's let's actually run this and see what happens. I have not run this yet with the messages being sent here. Oops, that is not the right thing. Am I already running this? Why didn't it launch? Okay, here we go. That was weird. Okay, so this will take a second to boot up, and then we can actually send a request. And then behind the scenes, Entity Framework Core will take a second to compile once we send this. But we should get a result, and it should go from authenticating to handshaking to, I think, something else. Well, I don't know. I didn't test this yet. All right, so we get disconnected for some reason. Uh, we send auth proof success, and then it disconnected for some reason. I don't know why, but so I'll have to go and investigate that. But if we type like something like derp, we'll get a failure. As you can see, uh, we we'll scroll up past this, past this exception, uh, we get a failure. So if you type the wrong password. The auth proof will fail if you type the right password. We'll get a success. Now, I don't know why this is disconnecting. Maybe I'm doing something wrong with the auth proof response. But I don't get another message after that. 
failed to read from network. So obviously it looks like the client's disconnecting itself. But I don't know why. Yeah, maybe I'm sending the wrong message back. I don't think I am though. Yeah, should should be right. Uh, although I did, I think I did, I think I did disable. Um, I don't think this works anymore. Don't think I can use interfaces. It's been a while since I touched the WoW project, but anyway, yeah, you can see that authentication mostly works. But sending, you know, I didn't test the sending message before I record this because I'm a little busy. Want to get to the other stuff that I got to do. But yeah, so it works. Uh, they just got to fix some stuff, do some refactoring here, and you know. That's this essentially highlights the design for emulation in GladNet 3. Though, you know, you create these handlers that handle messages. You don't read bytes. You don't write bytes. That's all done behind the scenes. You just set DTOs, and you know, it can be async all the way down async. Uh, you, and it works with Trancourt. You know, this particular project, you know, shows it works with the World of Craft protocol. I've got it. Got this also working with the Trinkcore database. So if this continues, it's going to be the gold. You know, work with existing databases such as Mango's Trinkcore. So yeah, that's it for today. Just wanted to show you guys that. Um, that's uh, all I can think of for right now. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in another video.